Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing something a little bit different so I thought I would bring you along with me. Um, we're in the orchards doing some pruning. So we've got Paul up there who's the orchard manager. Um, he's doing the pruning because obviously he knows what he's doing, what he wants to cut off and what he wants to keep. Um, on this farm pruning happens twice a year so uh, summer pruning as we are now and winter pruning. With summer pruning, we're kind of focusing on the top kind of quarter or third of the tree. Um, and the reason we do it in the summer is one, we can get the manitou on the ground because it's nice and dry. It's obviously been very hot this year in the UK. Um, probably hot all over the world, I'd imagine. Um, but, uh, so yeah, we can get on without making too much of a mess. And uh, also, the kind of trees at the moment have reached the end of their growing season um, so as and when Paul is pruning the trees you can see um, the branches aren't then going to bolt um, which is not what he wants because what we're aiming to do with the pruning is to create kind of like an A shape with the tree um, try and get it to grow upwards um, and then once it's reached the desired height they want then it kind of they can stop pruning and it, and it stays at that so um so yeah that's kind of the reason behind why we're pruning these are variety called dabinets um which are a late cider apple variety um and these are harvested after the potatoes so um there's about 130 acres of cider apple orchards here uh, with different varieties so early varieties such as I think Hastings over there um, and then later varieties here such as the Dabinets um, so it kind of works where they're doing the cereal harvest um, and then it sort of blends in with the early apple variety followed by the processing potatoes and then followed by the the late apple varieties so so like this orchard here um, which I hope to bring you videos of the harvesting of, of all those things anyway so um, so yeah um, in terms of where the apples go uh, cider apples so they're going to Westerns uh, which obviously Herefordshire they're definitely going to Thatchers as well which is Somerset um, and I don't know if they're going to Bulmers or not um, I think Bulmers are in Herefordshire as well um, but definitely, yeah, Westerns and, and Thatchers for these ones. Um, in terms of kind of the regions of of growing apples and fruit, generally Herefordshire, uh, Kent and also Somerset are the main ones in the UK. Probably generally because of the weather. Um, wet but sun and the soil type's right and all those sorts of things. So, um, so yeah, um, that's kind of what we're up to today. We finished the winter barley last Thursday evening, which was, I can't remember the date, um, but it's the 23rd today, so yeah, you can figure that out if you're really interested, but about four days ago, uh, Monday today, and uh, some of the other boys on the farm are out, I think they're going to go and harvest the all rape today, so uh, they're probably already at it. So I hopefully I'll go and get some footage of them doing that later once I've finished in the orchard. Um, kind of starting at 6 o'clock in the orchards at the moment just because it's so hot and obviously Paul up there. I want to avoid him getting sunburnt and, uh, and completely scorched up there. So starting earlier and finishing a bit earlier in the orchards. Um, so yeah, it'll give me time to, to go and see what they're up to later. But yeah, all I'm doing here is obviously pulls up in the man cage, um, which is secured in on the right hand side there. Um, it's over towards the left a bit so we can get him, kind of guide him into the tree where he needs to be. Um, but it is all hooked up and, and secured in. Um, all I'm doing really is obviously driving this Manitou, which is a 634 I think it is. Um, and just kind of guiding Paul into the bits of the tree he needs to get into to complete the pruning. Um, in terms of the winter pruning, it's simply like walking on foot and just focusing on the lower half of the tree. Um, all by hand again, he's doing it by hand now, but all by hand, uh, just walking up and down the rows. 
and uh, yeah, pruning in the winter, but obviously we're not making such a mark by walking on it as we would uh, bring a telehandler or a tractor in here then. So um, they're the reasons behind the summer and winter pruning. I was, um, I was watching something last night as well on uh, Countryfile around agroforestry and uh, I know this summer in particular because it's been so hot and we're not getting the grass growth that we usually would that people are going to struggle for um, feed so uh, yeah I was just sort of talking to Paul this morning um, when we had a little break about uh, I don't know the sort of possibility of bringing livestock into the orchards whether it work or not um, obviously he's got to come in and and spray quite often he's got a top up and down these rows um, got to keep an eye on various other things as well um, picking up branches and just keeping the orchards nice and tidy but yeah when he's spraying he's spraying quite often uh, particularly in a season like this so whether that would work around around the livestock I'm not sure um, you'd also <laughs> want to make sure you've got a breed that aren't going to touch the trees um, just want to eat the grass because that would be a bit of a nightmare as well um, but yeah they were saying kind of on country file last night about agroforestry in France and it was um, a guy producing arable crops in between the trees it wasn't as thin as this admittedly um, but there are definitely challenges when it comes to those sorts of things so smaller equipment you know combine headers and things like that so would it be less productive overall probably um, you know the cost of putting the trees in in the first place um, all those sorts of things but would it you know long term wise would it be better than what we're doing now um, hard to say but I mean it'd be interesting if anyone's got any experience with kind of agroforestry so for example you know orchard like this whether you've, you'd have sheep in here some goats or something um, or whether it's just you know woodland where they're you know breeding and um, growing pigs in there and that sort of thing um, yeah it'd be interesting to know I think livestock would probably work better than the arable side of things um, just really for the machinery spraying and all that sort of thing livestock you can kind of leave to it as long as they don't touch the trees um, to get on with it so yeah, just an interesting point I thought about. Um, it'd be good to know what people think. But uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get you get the camera up there with Paul so you can have a look and see what he's doing um, a little bit closer up. Obviously, yeah, we've kind of just I don't know how well you can see, but just pruning and making sure there's a, a single leader um, to go up. He knows what he's doing. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope to bring you more videos. Um, obviously, it's quite a diverse farm, so there's a lot of variety and hopefully a lot of kind of different videos to bring you, machinery and, and other things, really. Um, hopefully stuff that you haven't seen before as well. But I hope you're enjoying them. Let me know if you are. Um, Please like, comment and subscribe and uh, let me know if there's anything in particular you, you want answered around yeah, the farm or agriculture in general or anything really. Um, but yeah, thank you once again and see you all again soon.